Very excited for our next speaker, We Sauna Health's CEO, Daniel Carcillo. Let's give him a round of applause. Green. Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Good to be here with you and introduce you to We Sauna, a data driven life sciences company pioneering clinical therapies and drug development through the FDA pathway. My name is Daniel Carcillo, founder and CEO of the company. In my past life, I played 12 years professional hockey, nine in the NHL, won two Stanley Cups, fought 164 times in the enforcer role, and also sustained seven diagnosed concussions and suffered from slurred speech, headache, head pressure, insomnia, impulse control issues, memory issues, appetite issues, on top of anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. So I founded this company out of a personal journey. The last eight years uh, since I retired has been dedicated to recovering my brain health, optimizing it, uh, as well as getting the message out and being a mental health and, and concussion advocate. Across that path, I've tried pretty much every single clinical therapy there is known to man, from diagnostics to neurofeedback, to changing your diet, um, to self-deprivation tanks, hyperbaric chamber, um, talking to the best neurologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, and uh, got to a point where a lot of people do with concussion, where uh, you become suicidal, and the number one cause of death after a traumatic brain injury is suicide. Um, I turned to psilocybin uh, in a decriminalized city three years ago, and I used uh, a high dose of psilocybin, 5.6 grams, uh, where you do hallucinate, and um, it was administered by a PhD biochemist, uh, and uh, the next two weeks on that farm, my symptomology started to either lessen in intensity or all but fade away. From my research that I did, uh, you know, just reading PubMed papers and uh, talking to the best pathologists in the world, I knew nothing gets fixed in five hours. So we made a microdose regimen, uh, which was a subperceptual non-hallucinogenic dose of psilocybin in combination with CBD which is the only patented neuroprotectant on earth, patented by the US government in 2003 against neuronal death uh, as it relates to Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and dementia. Uh, what you see here is a before brain scan uh, of a QEG that I took um, before I went to this farm. And uh, as I played with milligram amounts and this regimen over the course of six months, I retested my brain on the right and took my blood and it came back for the first time in five years with no abnormalities. Uh, so um, I founded WeSauna to help people transcend barriers in mental health and performance, and I started to build my championship team. Uh, I know how to play my role within it, and one of the first people that I met is co-founder Chad Bronstein, who's raised over 150 million in the last two and a half years for uh, in other highly um, unregulated spaces. Uh, Mark Wingertson, my chief scientific officer, stole him from GSK. He's been a part of five first in class drug approvals like Tamiflu and Viagra. Uh, Abid Nazir, we came across him as I purchased SciTech and this clinical network to really establish the foundation for which these medicines will be delivered through. Uh, Zed Wang, chief uh, financial officer, um, also knows how to play in highly regulated spaces uh, as far as being public on the CSE. Uh, four months into founding the company, we, um, through an RTO, went public. Uh, Magna Gaeta, um, her dad built the Vein Clinics of America, and we took her from uh, Walgreens, where she was expanding their clinical footprint, and Jeff Jewell, head of medical and scientific affairs, who works closely with Mark over the last 25 years in drug development. Scientific Advisory Board uh, sourced some of the best people in concussion, like Dr. Frederick Carrick and Joseph Clark. James Fadiman, uh, who some of you may know, um, is one of the most acknowledged for his work in the microdosing space. Rachel Yehuda, Professor of Psychiatry and Neuroscience and Director of the Psychedelic Center at Mount Sinai. And Robert Kaufman, really the epitome of uh, what I believe will be the new standard of care uh, in turning these psychiatrists into psychedelic-assisted psychotherapists, 
Uh, he's sitting in Compass Pathways uh, Phase 2B trials right now, and he just completed his MDMA training with MAPS. Our board includes myself, Chad, Mitch Kahn, sold Grassroots Secure Leaf, Robert Kaufman, uh, Ian Bernstein, and then I'll highlight one more person, George Steinbrunner IV. Um, uh, I believe that working through people like George and the athletic platform, uh, it's the reason we have um, representatives like Mike Tyson and Juliana Pena and an IndyCar driver to really help bust through the stigmata associated with uh, psychedelics and mental health. So we have two sides to our business, care development, care delivery. Uh, the way that they're accretive to each other is we'll uncover new indications, validate protocols, further personalize treatment, and collect and integrate this data. So we'll start with care development first. We have two provisional patents. Uh, the FDA doesn't have any validated clinical animal models to actually prove that I've cured my pathology, but I can guarantee you I have. Uh, I've been on this medicine now for three years, so we'll look at secondary endpoints in our trials. Uh, but we have over 40 uh, symptoms or indications uh, encompassed in this provisional patent uh, that um, is specific to TBI-related symptoms. We also have a provisional patent on uh, migraine, which is um, non-TBI. So two large markets with considerable unmet needs. Uh, there is no FDA approved pharmaceutical for traumatic brain injury or any of the symptoms related. We use psilocybin and cannabidiol um, in a combination uh, with our subperceptual doses. Psilocybin, the reason being, um, really increases that neuroplasticity and neuronal crosstalk that's associated uh, with waking up different brain hemispheres that could be shut down to the uh, due to either emotional or physical trauma. And cannabidiol, because of its potent anti-inflammatory and neuroprotectant benefits, psilocybin has been shown to increase brain connectivity and resting blood flow in numerous studies. It's been shown to have rapid effects on treatment-resistant depression. CBD is obviously a patented neuroprotectant. And CBD and psilocybin independently alone have been shown to affect migraine days. In the largest uh, human trial to date, phase two studies, uh, we see that psilocybin in a high dose form uh, does have rapid antidepressant effects, but it wanes over time. Like anything else, there's no magic bullet. Uh, the Carhart Harris study showed the exact same thing, and our We Sauna animal study done at Charles River, a third party independent lab that Novartis and Pfizer and everybody uses. Um, showed the exact same effects. So what Mark was able to do with our scientific team is take my story, uh, the protocol that I've used that helped get me better, and put it into an FDA-validated uh, depressive model in mice. And what we showed was uh, with a loading dose coupled with the microdose of psilocybin with a dose-dependent effect of CBD, uh, we followed the epidiolex scaling at the highest dose of CBD, we showed a 64% improvement in depressive behavior in this mice over a loading dose of psilocybin alone. Our drug development strategy, we use combination therapies to uh, get our IP. We'll also optimize that through our novel formulation work that is ongoing right now. We have protocol innovation or methods of use. So using high dose psilocybin very specifically in a clinic uh, in combination with the at-home regimens uh, and the therapies that will be self-administered and live on your counter, similar to birth control in a lockbox. The patient won't know if they're taking placebo or not. Uh, we have a potential partnership with MAPS, um, who's in phase three with the FDA using MDMA for PTSD, and our analytical rigor, I believe, sets us apart from most of the other companies in the space. The current strategy before our March 11th meeting with the FDA for sauna 13, um, uh, you know, is encompassed up here. Uh, our lead indication was traumatic brain injury associated MDD, and we were looking to open up our phase one study um, in Q4 of this year. Um, but that has been changed since we had our pre IND meeting. Um, they have said a few interesting things to us, which uh, were a little bit of a surprise. Uh, in a very good way. They um, acknowledge that TBI-related MDD is a noble indication, uh, but they've asked us to expand to major depressive disorder, to broaden the horizon, and told us that we can get 
uh, or enrich the trials in phase three um, to get a carve out for TBI related MDD so as to not leave that population behind. Um, they accelerated our drug development program. So we are moving into a 1B2A instead of doing a phase one. Their written response was very specific that this may metabolize differently in healthy norms. So you do not have to do that. I think it's also a testament to the 375 page briefing booklet that we submitted to them. Uh, they are allowing us to use the Epidiolex uh, data that's available in the 505-2B pathway we leveraged the IB from USONA, which allows us freedom to operate around compass pathways patents because it's a different polymorph of psilocybin. Um, so our preclinical work uh, that we suggested to them in our farm talks program, um, we were very surprised when they accepted all of it. Uh, no changes, no additions. They didn't balk at the self-administered at-home dose, which will live on your counter um, and can be taken uh, daily. Um, and we are well on our way to IND clearance in Q4 um, of this year. So all uh, really exciting. And then one other thing uh, that they mentioned was we know you have a pre-IND number on migraine. Uh, so there's a lot of good CGRP medications out there. Will you consider or look at uh, these three orphan indications that have no options? Uh, so when the FDA suggests something, you obviously do it. Um, and so we're going to bring along and one of these orphan indications in parallel, and we're filing IP uh, on the 15th of next month. That will be done. So that's SANA 13 in our novel drug development program that we are moving through the FDA. We also have plans to meet with the MHRA later this month in the UK. Um, and we're also in partnership discussions with MAPS. So MAPS is using MDMA for PTSD. 67% um, of the respondents uh, with a two month follow up no longer qualify for PTSD anymore. Uh, my relationship with Rick is strong and he's really somebody that I, I looked to three years ago when I found this recovery and, and how I could possibly make it into a company to impact millions of people. There's a large crossover between TBI and PTSD symptomology. Um, it affects veterans and athletes and women of domestic violence. Um, so a lot of crossover with, with who they're treating for PTSD. So um, we made a small investment into MAPS to assess the viability through a BCG report uh, to see if this was uh, at all viable in North America. That came back extremely positive. So right now we're in uh, revenue split negotiations and geog geographical negotiations um, to use uh, MDMA for a TBI related symptom. Uh, and we're very excited about this possibility. Um, along the way, we acquired clinics, uh, we acquired SciTech, where uh, I believe very strongly that setting up, uh, preparing somebody for hallucination is going to be just as important as using this medicine. This medicine is more um, about the experience uh, than the actual molecule when you use it in a high dose. Um, but the potential for psilocybin MDMA is uh, really quite exciting because it exasperates what's at the forefront of your mind and can show a patient exactly why they're suffering uh, from addiction um, or from the trauma. So um, we're integrating into the 15,000 psychiatrist practices. Uh, we're building a um, mental health uh, clinical network with psychiatrist oversight. We believe very strongly in not setting up ketamine mills with uh, anesthesiologists and nurses. We also believe strongly that you're going to need the proper oversight in these clinics for when these scheduled drugs actually get prescribed and be able to store them. Um, in the two clinics that we're operating right now and the Naperville location that will be built out uh, by May 1st, uh, we have done over 4,000 ketamine infusions since 2016. So Dr. Abed Nazir, our CMO, is one of the most highly regarded in the Midwest. Um, and then I'm just adding in some of the proprietary diagnostics that I've come across. Um, uh, there's a large data play uh, to be had. And we're also mining the 4,000 ketamine treatments um, to be, be presented to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois to get 
uh, reimbursement for IV ketamine, the same way that Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts reimburses for IV ketamine with one very important distinction, psychiatrist oversight. Right now we're serving a mental health population uh, in the Naperville Clinic, we'll be serving a TBI population, and then we'll move into performance athletes. Uh, the patient journey, uh, people, everybody I'm sure can go on our website and, and take a look at the deck, but we have a digital front door. 57% uh, of the services are being done through telemedicine, um, insurance remunerated services. Uh, in Naperville, we'll be adding in uh, TMS, uh, but right now, the crux of the service offerings are psychiatry, uh, ketamine, and classic medicine work, and also uh, mental health um, counseling. So we're really excited about uh, the model that we're executing on. And uh, we also acquired uh, WeSana Solutions, which is a, a SaaS platform, which when a patient comes into our clinic, uh, we will integrate into their Apple Watch or give them a Whoop or Garmin or Fitbit. So we'll have the ability to track this patient and how they're doing both inside the clinic and outside of it. This SaaS platform also speaks to the clinician as far as how to administer milligram per kilogram amounts of ketamine uh, and other things of this nature. If we see that somebody has a major depressive disorder diagnosis, uh, goes out of the clinic, um, is doing well for the first week after infusion and then starts to fall off in their activity and sleep and heart rate variability, we can ping them through the app and schedule an appointment uh, back in our clinic before they reach crisis and before they have to go to the ER and get denied. Um, we truly believe, I truly believe, uh, that this is going to be the new standard of care, uh, focusing on a multidisciplinary approach to treating mental health, I think is crucial. Um, early days, we've been able to communicate and get a meeting with HCA, uh, and they're very excited about this model. I believe that these clinics should and could integrate into big healthcare uh, with these insurance remunerated offerings. Um, and this is just a little taste of, of the, the 3.0 uh, to our uh, clinical network, uh, where you see the longer duration a psychedelic therapy rooms in the back, and all of the psychotherapy and preparation um, is, is going on in the front. So to be very clear, MDMA, when it comes to market, it will be the first uh, classic psychedelic. It comes with 42 hours of talk therapy. It comes with 12 uh, 90-minute non-drug sessions, and you're only administering it, the actual drug, three times over the course of 12 weeks. So again, um, a lot of the uh, medicines that will be coming to market uh, will be very dependent on the actual psychotherapy in relation to the hallucinations. And that is We Sauna Health. So thank you everyone for your attention. Thank you, Daniel Carcillo, CEO of We Sauna Health. Do uh, you wanna take a question? Anybody have a question? Not. Oh, one. There we go. This gentleman. Thanks, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Appreciate it, man. Love it. We got one right here. Uh, Daniel, being a professional athlete, professional athlete, I know there's a lot of stigmatism that surrounds the use of cannabis or the use of you know psychedelics from that standpoint, especially when you get into during season or off season training and those sorts of things. Are you doing or working in any regard with regards to dropping or moving beyond that stigmatism for athletes? Yeah, um, you know, I think that the more that guys are willing to talk about exactly what they're using, um, the better it will become, right? I think that the way to change stigmata is to use pop culture, so to speak, and athletes and their platforms. Uh, that being said, some guys are in a position a little bit easier than others uh, where they can talk about it. The scheduling of these drugs doesn't necessarily help, but you see, you do see a lot of former athletes that are stepping away uh, that are in a, a really bad way medically uh, with their symptoms. And, um, you know, they, they try what's classically available to us and prescribed to us now. And when it doesn't work or exasperate other symptoms, they are... Um, you know, going to these unregulated markets or decriminalized cities to 
partake in this medicine and then and then speak about it. So, um, yeah, I think the more healing that happens and the more people that talk about this, uh, the more you know people will realize um, the potential of you know not only psychedelics but also cannabis for sure. Yes, sir. Right here in the middle. Yeah. Are they, are they open to conversation? Yeah, yeah. I've sat down with the NHLPA, sat down with the NHLAA. I've been to the UFC offices and talked to Dana White. Um, I talked to the WBC. Uh, I've talked to Jerry Jones of the NFL. Um, so, you know, we're, we're making headway. Um, I'm, I'm about to present to um, uh, the DOD uh, through Robert Kaufman. So, Everybody's interested in this and, and they want to know more. Um, you know, the only way to really truly change minds is, is to get a drug approved through, you know, the FDA and with scientific rigor. Um, and, you know, but I, I believe very strongly um, in a bunch of different pathways to get this medicine to people today. Um, so, and, you know, to the question earlier, I think that these sports leagues definitely have an onus on taking care of us a little better, but um, the big word is liability. And again, it's scheduled. So uh, not a lot of them are willing to um, take that first step. You know, I just, it'll be attached to approvals for sure. And then you'll see every single league jump on board. Awesome. Fantastic answer. Daniel Carcillo, CEO of Wasana Health. Thank you so much.